What is good Apple family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the one and only Apple stock and why I'm super bullish for the near term and long term futures despite it being in the red right now. I'm also going to be talking about the overall stock market and how on earth that played a role in Apple and other stocks being in the red because the Fed just did some very important things that could definitely affect the market coming forward. Now I'm also going to talk about why on earth many analysts are still giving Apple a $4 trillion prediction in terms of its valuation because of some big, big, big bullish catalyst coming out before i end the video with what apple put on their twitter page that makes me very bullish and excited for the future of this company now before i say anything about apple before i talk about the share price and what i expect to be happening i do have to mention some very important things first first off i'm not a financial planner guys this is all for educational and entertainment purposes only and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this is not only benefits me but this entire apple community as a whole and the last thing is if you guys can please check out the Moomoo link down below in the description if you do sign up for Moomoo where you're not only going to qualify for up to five free stocks each with up to three thousand five hundred dollars but you're also going to qualify for free real-time level 2 data for U.S. stocks with $0 commission trading. So please check out the link below. You can get free money if you sign up. And with that out of the way, guys, let's get on with the video. So Apple's looking really good right now, in my opinion, even though it is a little bit red, down about 2.66%. Look at how green it is over the long term. Now, for the short term, it does look a little bit bearish because of the news that's coming out. Before I talk about what's going on with Apple, I do have to talk about the overall stock market. So let's quickly look at the s p 500 currently it's down about 1.92 percent but look at tesla guys it's also down about five percent so look at neo down five percent the entire market is in the red right now and i have to talk about why that's actually playing out and how on earth will this affect apple so look at the fear and greed index guys as you guys can see right now, it's a little bit more on the fearful side than the greedy side. I showed you guys this a couple of days ago. We were on the greedy side for so long, and now we're suddenly moving to the other side. We're, we're a little bit neutral right now, but we are moving towards the fearful side. And that's very, very important because of what on earth is going on. So the, for the people that are confused... Look at this right here. CNBC reported that the Federal Reserve puts wheels in motion for balanced sheet reduction. So the Fed basically reported some very important things coming up for this you know, quarter, coming up for the year, for their future moves, and why they're very hawkish when it comes in for their future policies. So they did talk about the fact that, look, when you look at inflation, it is going up. However, employment in the U.S. is actually doing quite well. It is a little bit narrower compared to where it used to be before, but because inflation is still going up at this rate, the Fed does have a lot of printed money in its hands right now. And this printed money is in turn what the Fed is going to be using to now just taper on their bond purchasing, but raise interest rates. They are going to be sucking in money at a much quicker rate. And they announced that they're probably going to be um, um, raising the interest rates a lot sooner than many people had anticipated. So it could happen within a couple of months from now. So that in turn could be a negative catalyst for the market. And that in turn is leading the yield curve to start rising to the upward direction or switching directions. So if you look at the, the yield curve and you look at the federal funds rates, they're starting to go up. Or in other words, the cost to borrow money in America is already starting to go up. However, interest rates may end up following a little bit later. But in return, because of this, the overall market is now beginning to see some fear. I also want to talk about how this is affecting the market because this piece of news is also going to affect it. Now, look at this right here. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Chinese Evergrande situation. Basically, it's a big real, real estate company that's beginning to default on its debt. It's on the verge of bankruptcy, and it's in a very bad situation. It's very similar to what happened with the Lehman Brothers situation in 2008. So what's happening is before I was showing you guys that they were basically defaulting on debt, they were not able to make their payments to offshore um, uh, bond payment uh, lenders, right? And right now, it's now the same thing is happening to onshore bond payments. So it's really hard for them to pay off their debt. Now, the media was trying to make it seem like they were rebuilding their business. They're doing fine, but that does not seem to be the case, guys. It's becoming harder and harder and harder for them. And that, in turn, is going to be very hard for institutional investors, which are over leveraged right now. So that is the reason why a lot of money is pumping away from these really, really giant, giant, giant mega cap stocks like Apple and Tesla. And look at the S&P the same thing's happening but look at apple now 
did Apple do anything wrong to cause it to drop 2.66%? Now, in my opinion, the answer is no. And But at the end of the day, it's going to happen because it dropped with the overall market. Now, it's currently testing its level of uh, resistance, or I'm sorry, support based off the exponential moving average over the shorter time frame. So that's now acting as its support, but it does look like it's going to drop a little bit more. We could see it go as low as 170 because of this happen happening. Now, if you look at the uh, MACD, it's still a little bit in the green, but it could switch directions because the RSI did dip quite a bit. It's still on 67.86. So overall, the market's looking a little bit more bearish than bullish. But guys, but this is not the end for Apple. Don't lose your faith just yet, guys. You have to look at some other very important factors. Look at this right here. Apple is on the road to $4 trillion with its rumored headset and Apple car. Once again, this could bring Apple to $200 a share or even higher, right? And in turn, a lot of people are saying that Apple still has many bullish catalysts out there that could definitely boost its revenue, boost its production, and improve its numbers time and time again, which is going to look really good in the eyes of institutional investors. So that, in my opinion, is going to play a big role in Apple getting better and bigger and bigger as time progresses. Look at their empire guys you guys could say as they release these new products the revenue goes up the market cap starts exploding and i don't think that we're done just yet now can the market cap start to drop it can happen in during a time of a recession but right now guys remember the overall trend we're going to continue to see green even after the recession so don't let that scare you so to speak as new products are coming out such as a new headset or even an apple car it's going to be very bullish in my opinion now i want to end the video by talking about this right here apple supports say that if you've got an apple watch series 3 or later you could use it to unlock your iphone with face id when you're wearing a mask once again they have a tutorial to how to do this but the reason I'm talking about this is because Apple has very good customer service, in my opinion, and the value that they give to these customers is what causes people to just buy more and buy more and buy more Apple products. They love these products, guys, and that makes me very bullish for the future of this company going forward because I'm not losing faith whatsoever. The fundamentals are there. The production is there. And the EPS is probably going to get better, and the revenue is just improving, improving, improving as time progresses. So when, like I said before, in the short term, this thing could dip. I'm going to be honest with you, the market does look a little bit bearish for the short term, but in the long term, eventually it's going to recover and hit all time highs again, in my opinion. So for tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if we dipped about 170. However, guys, we should recover as time goes on. So don't necessarily lose your faith. So the important thing is to remember the fundamentals because the fundamentals are there. Now, I also want to let you guys know something else that's very important. And that is the fact that there could be a lot of FUD that's coming out, a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt from the media, and don't let it get to your head. You have to remain emotionally strong. I like to look at things like this as a test of your mental fortitude and how strong you are willing to hold your positions and not let your emotions get the best of you. So that's how I want to end this video, guys. I want to thank each and every single one of you who are a part of this channel for watching. I really hope that we have a very prosperous, very fantastic, and very successful year. And you must never, ever give up on your dreams. So I thank you for listening, guys. Never, ever quit. And the more people tell you that we're crazy, the more you should be motivated to prove them wrong. Thank you and never give up. I'll see you in the next one. Apples to the moon and peace out.